Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com here at Allen's camera because the Nikon D3200 kit with the 18 to 55 lens just came in. So now it's time to unbox it, sniff it, tell you what I think about it, and put it up against, well, up against visually to the Nikon D3000, which I had from a long time ago for the super secret project videos. So what I'm going to do here, unbox it, do all that good stuff. Then I'm going to do some video tests, some still tests, so I can put those files up for you to see. But I'm not going to overanalyze it at this point. I have one coming into me from Nikon in the next couple of days, which I'm going to take away with me and then do different actual use tests with it, tests with it when I'm in Florida. So let's get to it. Let's unbox it. Let's play with it. Let's see what it's like. We'll probably skip the kit lens because we've talked about that one before. As a basic kit lens, it's perfectly fine, but I always recommend adding 35 1.8 opposed to the kit lens. I think you will learn much better with that, but unbox it. Let's get right to the accessories. Hmm. You have this little accessory which goes over the viewfinder. You'll never use it. You've got a mini USB, it's not bad to have. You have a basic Nikon strap, could always replace that with the Black Rapid if you so choose. Video cable, proprietary video cable, it lets you connect that to the TV if you want to watch your videos back. There's also an HDMI adapter to it. You've got your battery and you have your charger which just plugs into the wall. Here we go. It's just one of these. That's it. So it's going to take up the whole charger space in the wall, which is not the best thing in the world. So that is the charger. There's the strap. There's that. We've got the manuals in. It's funny, these manuals are not as thick as the D4, but that's obvious. English, Spanish. Now let's get to the camera. Sniff it. That smells good. I know what it smells like, too. It smells interesting. So the first things first is it, it is, it's very light, very light. I mean, that's what you expect from a bottom end camera. They say it didn't replace the D3100, but I would venture to say that the 3100 is not long for this world. Um, I would buy the 3200 over the 3100 at this point. So just feeling it in the hands, very light. It's like a piece of plastic with a sensor in it, a battery and a memory card. It's a basic basic camera, but it's a great starting camera to get you into the game shooting, to figure out what you're doing, and to go on from there and graduate through your five-year plan to figure out what to go with next. Uh, what's great about it, honestly, is the fact that this model adds a microphone adapter not adapter, but input. You can attach a microphone. Now the Canons have done that for quite a long while on the T3Is and the T2Is, but you now have it here on the Nikon D3200. Uh, you also have an HDMI, which you can plug in so you can watch it on TV. Other than that, they now put the record button up here on the top instead of on the back. Uh, and this is where your memory card goes, SD slot, really basic camera. It's gonna do the basics of the basics of the basics but do a nice job, probably, with a 24 megapixel sensor is insane. All right, you know what it does smell like? It does smell like an ice cream sandwich, but not any kind of ice cream sandwich, a mint chocolate chip ice cream sandwich, which I love. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. So let's move this to the side, move this to the side, break out the D3000, and look at them both. They are pretty much identical. They are pretty much identical, even after a couple of years. You have more of a swooshy McSwoosherson over here. This one has a microphone. I don't think that's the microphone there. The microphone's here and the speaker's up top. Obviously the D3000 didn't do any video, but the 3200 now does. In terms of anything else, they are honestly basically the same. They feel very similar, very, very similar. And you know, this is a little more ergodynamic. Uh, it may fare better in the wind tunnel test. Yeah, look at that. It looks like the 3000 is blocking wind. That's not good when you're, when you're like running with your camera. It's gonna slow you down a little bit. Whereas this, yeah, oh, I can feel the air popping over the top in the wind tunnel test. Yep, it's hitting my finger on the other side, which means it's more aerodynamic. It's definitely gonna, oh yeah, this blocks all the air. I don't even feel it. It's totally gonna make it better for you when you're shooting in the wilderness and uh, need to get extra, extra wind resistance. 
So really, if you need to see the preview video, you can watch the preview video popping up on the screen, giving you all the rundown of the specs, but this is just showing you all the buttons. I will have a video guide for the D3200 pretty much ripping it all apart, showing you exactly what every button does, what all the menus mean, and everything along those lines. But for this video, unboxing, sniff test, and coming up after this, we're gonna have some samples for you to look at, whether they're stills, video samples. I may even put this on the tripod and let it record a video of me to see how it fares next to the D4. So we'll be right back. So now we're back, and what I'm doing right now is you are seeing the video that is recorded with a Nikon D3200. It is on manual settings because you have manual control. There is also the microphone input and that's what you're hearing me with right now because if you didn't, it would sound like I was totally far away in an echo chamber. Well, not so much of an echo chamber, but having the microphone input makes everything sound so much better. You know what? I should probably do a test in a second where I pull it out. I'll throw that test in there so you can just see what it's like without the microphone plugged in. This is just a quick audio test of the built-in microphone from the distance that I am from this camera. It has a 3518 on it. Um, you can hear the difference. Now let's get back to the main audio playing with the actual microphone connected. Uh, I have it on auto white balance. It kind of looks a little blue, at least it did on my tests, but that's on the back of the camera. But everything else, shooting it right now, you're going to see samples pop up on the screen. And right now they are JPEG files because there is no RAW converter as of right now. And a new RAW converter for Adobe Lightroom, I may have to take it into NX2 if I have that on my computer for, from Nikon to see if I can open it. But it handled very well. It's a basic beginner camera, but the quality that you're getting out of it is so much better than what you used to get out of, say, uh, the D3000. But even going beyond that, I would probably be interested to put against just image quality next to a D2X or even the D2H back in the day. Being that it's a new 24 megapixel sensor, the low ISO capability is even better. You saw some, you're seeing some 6400 ISO tests pop up on the screen now. And also, you're going to see some video samples pop up on the screen where I let it do the autofocus, auto follow focus, because this camera allows you to do that. So, so far, unbelievable for the price of the camera. What's it, $699 with a lens? I don't know if they'll ever sell it without the lens, but for $600, bucks, it is a killer beginner camera or even just a killer throw-around camera that I, that I would take on a trip with me because, as you can see, the difference in size between a D4, oh, don't want to fall my D4, uh, and the D3200, it's quite a big difference. It's like, hello, I'm a D4, and it's like, yeah, I'm a D3200. I'm going to take you out, Mr. D4. No, you're not. I'm a D4, and I'll just crush you. Like, like I'm not going to do that because it's not my camera. But those are the two cameras. Huge difference in weight. And the wind tunnel test would definitely not win here. I think, you know, I think the 3200 definitely would win the wind tunnel test. It's more ergodynamic, takes up less space. This is huge, this is miniature, but we obviously know that. Top of the line, bottom of the, bottom of the line, $600, $6,000, big difference. But the image quality coming out of this little bad boy isn't terrible at all, as you've seen from the images that have popped up on screen. So again, this video that I am recording right here is being recorded with the Nikon D3200, 1080 P at 24 frames a second with the audio piped in and it's in manual settings, I can control the aperture and I can control the shutter speed all independent. Now when you're doing the aperture, you have to get out of live view in order to change it and then turn live view back on once you change it. So that is just a basic test of a Nikon D3200. Coming up in the not too distant future, I'm gonna have a full on hands-on review of the Nikon D3200 as well as a user's guide for the people that pick it up that are looking to know everything about that camera. It will be up on YouTube. So thank you guys very much for watching. From Alan's camera, Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. To pick up a free photography guide, a guide to capturing motion in low light situations, please put your name and email address in this box and hit send it and we will send it to you for free.